Hello, I'm Joe. And TJ. And we are the Schoolhouse 302. And this is our Read This series. And we are incredibly excited to bring you some works today that we're thrilled about. This entire month, we've been focused on, you know, really how would John Dewey, someone we've studied quite a bit about years ago in teacher, teacher school, um, his famous works, you know, you'll see his name at the bottom, a lot of email signatures, but TJ, I wonder sometimes how many people have really read his work. So as, as we talked about, we're now coming out of COVID in a post-vaccinated society. We have changed the way we've done things across the board. The question is going to be how many of those things can we keep? Should we keep? And how did our experience throughout COVID change the way we're going to do things moving forward? All very important points. So we thought, why not try to almost look at this level of change within education through the great reformer, John Dewey, and really brought up uh, his book, um, which really in education is one of his seminal works. You know, we can't say enough about how prolific he was also, though. And it wasn't just in education. Actually, if you really think about it, he's tagged far more in other um, areas or domains first before education. This is just really where he's had a ton of influence. So this first book we're recommending, Experience and Education by John Dewey. It's not that big, but it is heavy. Don't, don't let the size fool you, folks. This is dense, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's impressive reading and we'll get your mind going and you'll have to definitely read a couple pages twice. That's for sure. TJ. Sure thing, Joe. Let me tell you something. I, I am a big Dewey fan. Um, mostly because he was talking about stuff in education in the, in the thirties that we still don't see in a lot of classrooms today across the country and throughout the world. I mean, that really is a student centered approach. Um, he, he focused a bit. So a few concepts from the book that I think are really important metacognition. He focuses a lot on how the learner thinks, thinking about thinking theories of, of, of uh, learning for the learner themselves. He talks about the, um, the control of a classroom and how if, it, if we're not careful, it becomes the teacher's job to uh, just maintain order uh, rather than giving freedom to the students to learn. Um, he talks about meaning and purpose, uh, the purpose of education, making meaning as a, as a learner. We often forget that Dewey was a philosopher. I would consider him a humanist, a culturalist, and he was um, he was really focused on creating the educational environment that was going to be best for the learner to become someone who could contribute to society, right? So it really was all about that contribution that we can make. You know, he was progressive. He was ahead of his time. And if you haven't read the book, Experience and Education, you got to pick it up. Every educator should have that on their shelves. And you know what? I'll just say this. I think we got to think and talk more about educational theory and how we put theory into practice and what the studies and research and science says about learning and how we get to get that into the classroom. Um, and our best teachers, our best principals, our best district leaders are doing that all the time, but we got to make sure we can get that in and um, check out our blog about the, the, the claims that we think Dewey would have made regarding COVID and some of the things, but definitely the personalization of learning that has happened during COVID, including even asynchronous work. I think Dewey would have been thrilled with that. Joe? Yeah, it's important to remember these books date back. So we're th this month, we are going back a little bit in education, and there have been tremendous strides. I, it's not so much when people talk about education in America, in Canada, Switzerland, China, we start hearing all these things. It's not, you know, the revelation that I've had recently, TJ, it's not so much that education isn't changing. There hasn't been great advancement. There are. 
What we're talking about, though, is whole scale reform. That's the challenge when we're talking about scaling and any business, any industry organization can tell you that is the real challenge, right? So it's not these pockets of success. It's not that people haven't taken ideas and thoughts and haven't made great strides. You know, you're very happy with a lot of what's going on in classrooms within your district. I feel the same exact way. I'm really excited about this upcoming school year and taking some of of what I feel that we've grown from throughout COVID. But that said, I do want to highlight a point you said. We got to step back and get into the theory sometimes. I think that's, you know, throughout our podcast, we try to offer some of the theory, but also some of the practical. You know, last week, um, we or last month, excuse me, we really focused on Amber Tiemann's work and, you know, that leading, you know, whenever you're going to lead with praise, you're going to lead with helping people see what they've done right and put that mirror in front of them. They're all filled with practical strategies. Sometimes we have to fully understand the why we're doing that. Do we center so much on the child? It's an amazing thing. This dated this far back. So true. It's such a great book. I hope that we sparked some some thinking. Um, and you know, hopefully you'll you'll take a look at that book and some of his others. Joe, you know what? We usually leave um, leaders, our our readers, our listeners with a with a tip. Do you have a tip at all uh, that we could talk about for reading, or maybe even Dewey's work itself? Yeah, I thank you, TJ. A couple things, real quick. I'm I'm gonna say these books you can pick up fairly cheap. I mean, we've announced this tip in the past, but when you go on Amazon, you'll find used books, especially like this, <clears throat> relatively cheap. Um, and but this is also a quick tip. This is a part of the Phi Delta Cap in lecture series. I think this book actually rounded off the cycle. I'd have to look that up. Uh, Don't quote me on it, but this rounded off the cycle for that time. And so they put stuff out. But what I would say my tip this uh, this month, Joe's tip is, you know what, as you mentioned, TJ, Dewey was really a philosopher. He was a thinker. And so I'd say, you know what, what better way to dig into some of his work like how we think this is another tremendous book. This kind of stuff, though, is not to be taken lightly. You sit down, you invest in this reading. This is not stuff, in my opinion, where you check off and you're just looking to say, you know what? Oh, I read Dewey this month. Good for you. You know, no, this is where we're trying to truly learn. Think about our thoughts. There's been so much done in the world of neuroscience in the last decade. It's fun to start seeing what other people wrote about on thought, you know, years and years ago. So how we think is one that I think is a must read as well. Dewey's how we think. Yeah. Thanks for that. So what two great books this time, I think the tip there, Joe is really great in terms of study, right? We're educators. You know, you talked about the theory, you talked about philosophy. What you're really saying there is study and look back at how people were talking about how we think in in the early 1900s it's it's incredible how linked that stuff is to neuro neuroscience um and cognitive science uh, of today and so two great books pick them up that's our read this series we hope you read we hope you watch our videos always on the context out of the context of leadership, please check out our work at the schoolhouse302.com. We always like it when you like, follow, and share with a friend. We'll see you next time.